Hey guys, we just released something huge. We're in pre-launch for it, but this is amazing. We've talked to a number of the people who are some of the bigger players in our group and they all agree this is the best thing we've done in 10 years, okay? So what's it, it gonna mean for you in effect? It means you're gonna give away something for free and you're going to, to spend maybe 15 minutes a week on it and for many of you that will replace your entire income, okay? So let me walk through this. I gotta start at the beginning and walk through it. So let me start by telling you a story. Okay. Many of you know, because I've talked about this before, that one of our uh, family friends is a fellow named Jason Hayes, H-A-Y-E-S. And he is um, a composer for music for video games, okay? Big video games, the ones that most of the people are playing online that have like 40 million players at one time around the world, okay? He creates the music for games like these. So one of them is World of Warcraft, all right? So the movie Warcraft has him in the credits as the composer for a lot of the music there, because that's his job. So he's been a senior composer at Blizzard Entertainment. Um, and right now he works for a company called Riot Games, sort of the way it works in that industry is they jump from company to company on each next uh, project that becomes available and they dive in. So Riot Games, their biggest, program, uh, biggest project is called League of Legends, all right? Now, we went to see them uh, last summer. Our family went down and stayed with them uh, for about a week. And we just got chatting and everything else. And one thing we did in the middle of it all was take that tour of that company, right? So he gave us the tour. And it's just incredible in there. You know, I could go on and on about how, how tall the hallways are, how much security they have, the statues they build to the biggest um, items that they have, the way all the people are sitting around in a group with headsets on, on their computers. Uh, chatting with each other while they build things and so on. And they've got liquor over here. You can drink Bailey's Irish cream, mix yourself a Bloody Mary, whatever you want, have some vodka while you're working. You know, it's on you to keep yourself in control, right? All the vending machines for anything you want to buy in the way of food are free. They have cooks that make personalized meals constantly. They have like three or four meals a day they're just giving you. You know, anytime you want to walk in, uh, you can just eat for free, no question. You want to walk in and get some of the best coffee in the world. They've got this huge coffee rotisserie or whatever, and you, <laughs> rotisserie. you walk in there and they give you great coffee, whatever you want. There is no such thing as paying. Everything is free, everything, okay? And the amount of money is insane. One of the other games, Dota 2, okay? He's made music for that. I, I think it's Death of the Allies. I'm not really a gamer. Um, but they came up to Seattle and rented out the Seattle Center really for this massive convention they did where they had the competition down to the last two kids. The winner took home $20 million. Okay, just insane amount of money. And so anyway, here's the takeaway. Okay, I, when we went to see them, we walked in there and started taking the tour. At one point I said, oh wow, this is, this is really huge. So, so what's the biggest, uh, you know, your flagship products so far? And they said, League of Legends. Like, oh, okay, League of Legends. All right, what's that all about? The guy kind of told me. And, you know, Jason sort of broke it down. was like, oh, I get it. And I said, so you guys, you make your money selling the games. He said, no, 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 no. He said, we give the games away for free. The game is free. It's like, the game is free. You know, and this this was news to me. I couldn't understand it, really. Because this, this company is huge, right? Tremendous amount of money flowing in. And he's like, the game is free. I said, well, okay, if the game is free, how do you make your money? He goes, we make our money this way. He goes, we pay very close attention to the characters that we develop that perform in the game. Uh, because the character, people need to have rapport, develop uh, an affinity with one or more of these characters. So as, as our people play, they kind of fall in love with one of the characters. Usually when they play for free, the characters sort of rotate. They wind up playing with whatever character pops up randomly for them to play. Well, sooner or later, they want to choose a character of their own. They want that character. So they probably are going to put some money into the system, right? They're gonna buy some digital dollars with their money. And very cheap, they're gonna buy upgrades that they like. So the upgrades aren't forced. And it's not like there's any forced levels. The whole world of the game, if it's like an island or a continent or whatever it is, the game, uh, the whole world of it is totally free and available all the time. Everyone has full access to all of it. <laughs> Nothing hidden. It's like, wow. So everyone can run in and play for free. But you might want to get some advantages. For instance, um, the better you get, you get more levels. 
and the higher up the levels you go, you can do things like choose a better battle axe, right? So now when you swing the battle axe at something, you get more damage out of it, more points towards, you know, whatever that goal is, whatever you do with the battle axe, right? Or you can buy clothes, accessories for your character. You can buy these small things, bigger things, whatever they are. Accessories, upgrades. And the only people who would buy them are the people who see the benefit they're getting. In other words, as you play the game, you develop some skill, the game starts to mean something to you, and then you really begin to care about the accessories, you know, like getting one of the characters in the accessories. So they spend a lot of time making these the characters in the game appeal to the different submarkets that they have, one way or another, male, female, uh, different races, different personality types. They really try to tie that into the characters, you know, how wide, how narrow do you go? Uh, but then people buy what they want in the way of accessories. Some people want the better battle axe, but they could care less about the cloak. Other people, they want the cloak, but could care less about the battle axe, or they want to get a glider to float, or they want to get like a porter rift so that they can disappear in one part of the island and appear in another. So the upgrades lend value. They lend improvements. They make things better. Now that the people have been playing in this free world long enough to understand the world, so that they understand why they want the upgrades. So there are two ways to get the upgrades. You either earn them by climbing up through the levels, performing tasks that get you points that allow you to unlock the benefits as you go. Or if you want to take the shortcut to keep up with the Joneses, and a lot of people do, they want to play at the highest power level they can, then they will put some money into the game and they will buy these things. How much do these things cost? Well, small amount for these guys, right? For instance, because they're appealing to kids, you know, eight year olds, 10 year olds, 12 year olds, 14 year olds, 16 year olds, and 20 year olds, 22 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds. They really appeal to everyone demographically as, far, as wide as they can, whoever likes their game. Um, and so anyway, when people go buying, they're paying low ball, you know, for every dollar, real dollar they put in, like US dollar they put in, they get something like a hundred virtual dollars, okay? V bucks or V dollars or whatever. And when they go, and so if they put in like 10 bucks, you get like a thousand. Now, what do things cost? Well, they feel like normal prices, I guess. Uh, the ax might cost, you know, um, 80 <laughs> V dollars, right? Whereas the cloak might cost 120 V dollars and so on, so on, so on, so on. So the cooler, the gadget, some are cheaper, some are more expensive, but there you have it. Okay. Whatever it does, that lends a value to you, then that's the way you'll see it. A mask might only cost like, you know, uh, 50 V dollars, something like that. It just depends on how cool it is and what people think. Anyway, having said all that, what is the takeaway really? They make all their money on those things, the accessories. Okay. That's how they make the majority of their money. So what did they do to make it possible to make a lot of money, make it possible for people to taste, right? Their product. They can run around the world. They can hop in vehicles and drive around. They can swim through the lakes and steal a speedboat from somebody and take off, you know? Uh, they can shoot at guys with weapons. They can glide through the air with gliders. They can hop in planes or helicopters or whatever. They can leap through the air and throw a bomb that sticks to something in time, boom, you know, a clinging bomb. Uh, all these different things. And then as the game progresses, it goes through stages to keep people interested. So they, they do different things with the different seasons they release, season one, two, three. So maybe their, their world makes some metamorphosis, like um, there's a new season coming into it for winter. And so part of the world becomes covered in snow. And that'll cover the cities and the mountains and the fields to allow uh, different sorts of interaction there. They might introduce things like zip lines, introduce things like hoverboards. And each thing has some kind of advantage. And these are things that they can therefore allow people to earn or buy. Now, most of the stuff you have to buy, some things you can earn. If you really earn a lot, if you're one of their core players and you're earning a great deal, then yeah, you can still earn some of those really, really big things. Okay, so takeaway number one, you have to make it easy. You've got to lower the barrier of entry for people to taste your product clearly all the way around. They have to understand the product fully through their own use. 
That way they've defined how they like to use the product. And then once they understand that, the upgrades and the accessories that they choose to get, they fully understand. They, they're not dabbling in mental theory and hoping they're not making a mistake when they buy an upgrade. They don't wanna waste money. They don't wanna get something that they can't understand or that doesn't seem to have value to them. They wanna know that it makes sense. They don't wanna to try to struggle to understand. They wanna know. So the, the takeaway number one, and this is for a huge deal, um, for a huge way of, of getting launched is lower the barrier to entry. Create the flagship product that's full, and when you do it, make it free, okay? Allow people to know your world first, and then be able to grow within that world by getting upgrades, okay? And allow it to be possible to earn some things as well as buy some things, okay? So that people can go whichever way they want, depending on their constraints or their, their available advantages, they can just take off with it. That's the first bit of takeaway there. And here's where I saw it again. I kind of forgot about it because it was last summer. Uh, but then my kids started playing another game called Fortnite. <laughs> and it's really the only game that I've paid any attention to, all right? Because I keep seeing it when they're playing it. So Fortnite, probably many of you know it. Um, and it is this kind of world that I'm describing because it's the only one I really know well. Um, just seeing it all the time. I've even played it. I understand how this becomes a fascination. And I understand this. If you tried to explain to me how Fortnite would be interesting to me before I had a chance to hop in, what would you say? There, you can run through fields. You can swim through the water. You can steal a speedboat. You can hop in a helicopter, etc., etc. All of this is kind of over the top of my head, though. I can't touch it. I can't feel it. I don't really understand it. So then when they tell me you can buy upgrades for your character, that sounds like a joke, right? And they're saying, no, but it gives you advantages or you can earn them. I'm still like, so what? You know. <laughs> but if you actually hand me a controller and let me start to move around in that world as I develop some skill, first I'm stumbling around. I'm trying to figure out how to turn versus move in one direction or another. Then I'm trying to figure out how to turn while moving so I can do something like jog to the right while I glance to the left. Wow. But as I develop some skill and I can switch between things, weapons and tools, as I start to figure out how to do things in that world, then I start to realize what's interesting about it to me. Now, that may still sound silly unless you compare it to something more old time. You know, if you're not a gamer, think of chess. People who play chess can start with the cheapest plastic board they buy at Target, right? And they can start practicing chess. It doesn't mean much until you start to develop some skill. Then you start to care more. You want a bigger board, maybe. Nicer pieces, maybe. Maybe even themed pieces. What, like Athens versus Troy or something like that. You know, whatever. The, I'm not a historian. <laughs> Certainly not a Greek historian. Uh, but exactly, the different battle groups and so on. You start wanting these pewter pieces that are really nice. And you start inviting people to play with you because it's interesting. And anyone else who's of a similar mindset, they're the ones that say, hey, do you, do you like chess? Want to play? Right? And then for some guys, that branches into other kinds of logic games. There are really a lot of fascinating logic games, even board games that are produced around the world, that is, uh, some have really become very famous and everyone's getting them. Ticket to Ride is the sort of build your trains across the nation, either across the U.S. or Canada or Europe. Then they have things like Carcassonne, you know, um, um, what's the one with the, uh, the panda versus the farmer? The panda's already eating everything. There's all these different games that are really fascinating. And as guys are getting into them, they care more. The accessories have value. The upgrades mean something. And they understand the advantages they get from them. Okay, so the first takeaway is, and, and here's the biggest takeaway. That's how they made their money. Imagine if they sold the game. Then you're back to the beginning. You have to describe to people, you can swim through the water, steal the, the speedboat, hop in a helicopter. It's like, okay, you're back to that. The, when you try to describe it, it's really hard for people to understand, right? Think about our projects, our products too. When we try to describe something that people can buy to use for their website, their website, and add on to their website, then 
we have to describe, hey, you can make a lot of pages with it. They can be for the different cities. They can be for the different products. They can flip between images and so on. And it produces a sitemap. Okay, not a bad picture or anything, but it's really hard to picture, right? Then somebody's like, does that mean I have a thousand menu links going down the page? No, no, no. These are like all different doorways that come into your site. But once they're in, you know, they, they come in your site through any one of those pages. But by getting into your site, you've got your regular menu and regular options and regular buy now page and learn more page and everything else. So people are like, oh, okay. You know, but still they have to try to think it through. And then you start talking about the difference between a simple project that maybe has a few variables. Doesn't tend to stick as well as Google, but once you go into more, then you can talk about things like more columns of variables to create more variability throughout the project. Then you start talking about nested variables, variables within variables. Now, by now, they're lost, right? If they have to try to imagine this without having been able to taste it, actually put something on their website, create their first stumbling block pages, just try it, you know, and then realize what they're doing and learn how to steer it right, improve their skill sets, right? Then they start to get what's going on and they start to think bigger. And then all of our tools make sense. The Pages Maker macro makes sense. The Moji Toolbar makes sense. Want to go with multiple websites and go even bigger? Theme to HTML Toolbar, the T to HA Toolbar makes sense. Okay. Things like this start to make sense. Need to create mass generated schema so that you don't just create schema for one page, but the proper schema for every page. It'll make sense after they can picture and understand all these different pages they're creating on their website, okay? So here's what, what the takeaway of that is. Make your flagship product free and then sell the upgrades. We just released theme to HTML, or not theme to HTML, that whole T to HA CMS, right? That's for our CMS. That's like the banner and the blocks. We just finished updating HTML blitz. And we said, what are we going to do with that? Turn it into an add-on. What are we going to do with that add-on? Show people how they can attach it to any website they have. We made it so it works on anyone's cPanel. Doesn't have to be our server. It can be theirs. It can be a shared cPanel. And we made it so it works with whatever their website is. Doesn't have to be HTML. They don't even have to create an HTML web page. It'll work with WordPress. Weebly, Joomla, <laughs> Wix, as long as they're paying enough on their on their website, they, they've raised their stakes enough that they have access to a cPanel, okay? They can access their cPanel and they have the right to create a database, right? If you can create a database, you can put data in the database, right? So as long as they can create a database, then they can actually use this now, they may have some limitations on just how far they can go with it on their server because they may not be paying much for their hosting and so they can only go so far. But once they start hitting that roof and recognizing the value that they're getting out of it and that they can scale, now they understand why they want to do bigger, better things, get bigger, better cPanel, upgrade cPanel, why they want to get tools that make it easier to create more variability and nested variables through larger stacks of pages, right? So we released theme to HTML Blitz. Now, what works with it? The Pages Maker macro, the Moji toolbar, the theme to H or T to HA toolbar, because the functions that we have on these different toolbars, okay, all these are Excel macros, relate to our T to H CMS, like, you know, theme to HTML T2HC and T2HCN, right? But it also works on HTML Blitz. The advantage of HTML Blitz, people don't have to divorce from their website. They don't need to use ours. They don't need to switch to banner or blocks. They can stay on their website with their exact look and feel. And they can create lots and they can take their 15 page website, say if they're anything, uh, whatever they do, whether it's like service industries, you know, plumber, electrician, roofer, whether it's, um, um, MLM programs, affiliate programs, anything. They want to create pages for all their downline, whatever they want to do. They can do it with their pages just the way they are, okay? And they can still use all of the 
mass optimized web page generation properties of HTMLB. By the way, yep, that's the crowning point there. This, we, we are calling it what it is. The HTML blitz doesn't make any sense to anyone and it's not even HTML blitz anymore. So as we release this, this is Moji. Mass optimized web page generation. We're calling the product what it is. Mass optimized web page generation. It's funny because we've gone through so many layers of things that brought us back to that eventually. Um, <laughs> so we're there again. So we are talking about uh, an add-in for a product that is 10 years old now that we have made many variations with over the course of time. Theme to HTML is Moji. It's just a different version. So we gave it a different name so people could distinguish and so on and so forth. Over the years, we've had everything. We've been way back in the past. We have Moji UAP, right? Well, now we're back. Key advantages now of Moji, it's an add-in. It's very easy to install to any website. You operate it on the website. You don't need a Moji, um, I don't even remember what we called it, the Moji project piece that you had on your computer. You don't need that anymore. Second, it doesn't produce HTML pages. It goes two more steps. One, it goes blitz. So instead of producing tons of pages, it produces data into the database. That takes up only 1% of the room. But more important, so you can put 100 times as much material for the same megabytes or gig. But even better, um, we compressed it, SQL compression. So it is as up to date as it gets. That means it uses about 3% of the space required by blitz. So it's 3% of 1% of what Moji used to be able to produce. I think it means you can create 30,000 times as much content as you were able to produce before, okay? Just insane amount. So even if you put a lot of extra pages onto a panel, um, it's like a blip of space you're using and demand you're using from the database. It's really, really cool. Final thing, everything about HTML Blitz, we've proven it. We've got it upgraded so it works on the latest version of cPanel, cPanel API. It works with the latest version of WHM. It's using the latest version of MySQL, which is MariaDB 10.2, instead of what most people are using, which is PHP 5.6. It will work with PHP 5.6, but when guys want to upgrade their servers and they need to upgrade their software to keep up because there are big changes between the older versions, the standard versions, and when people finally have to upgrade because hacks are getting in their way. And, and that's coming. For everyone who has old stuff, hacking is getting into it now. And that's why it's time to upgrade. So people that move forward, they get out of PHP 5 and a PHP 7. They get from Easy Apache 3 to Easy Apache 4. Uh, MySQL 5.6 all the way up to MySQL uh, MariaDB 10.2. We have already made sure that our software is compliant. So it works with their old stuff and their new stuff equally well. So long as they can access our cPanel and they can create a database, this will work. Okay? And we're giving it away for free. Right? All people have to do is sign up to the system for that. So now we're talking about signups to the system. That leads me to the next topic, and that's going to be where we talk about you. How would you like to make a lot of money giving away a free tool? Because everything that leads people from free to paying for the upgrades is just a few days between watching some videos, trying it out, and understanding the value it has. And then coming back to buy some upgrades to take it to the next level so they can become truly competitive more than they ever thought, right? With the biggest players in the game. This is what we're opening. It's different than all the stuff we're doing. And so this is its own thing. We put together the best system for this in the back end, and I'm gonna walk you through what that means in the next step of this video. Keep up, this is so interesting and you're gonna love it.